Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be radiology number 39. Let's get started. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be radiology. Now I do quickly want to profess, preface something, and that's kind of the fact that there's some technological difficulties happening right now with the editing software I'm using, and the upload feature for images isn't quite working. So I'm going to try and explain this the best I can without these pictures. And maybe later on, once it's back up and working, I can maybe edit the video to kind of show this or re-upload it. We'll figure it out. But anyway, today I kind of wanted to talk about different, like, other different things I've seen in the ICU. And more specifically, I want to talk about chest tubes and intubations. Um, I believe most people think of like a common misconception, thinking it's like the same thing. It sounds like the same thing. However... A chest tube, if you remember, if you go back to just my previous videos, is drainage of pleural effusions. Now, if you remember, pleural effusions were fluid that was beyond the pleural lining of the lung. And so what it does is when you drain that fluid out, it allows the lung to expand more and thus increases your oxygenation rate and your O2 stat. When there's a lot of liquid, um, kind of preventing the lungs from inflating and deflating, what happens is lungs aren't able to expand as much and your heart has to work harder and you're not getting enough oxygen. So all that problems. Now, the difference is being intubated is when your lungs are literally not able to suffice for your whole, whole body. It could be due to a pearl effusion or it could be due to some other factor, right? But basically what it is, is they put a whole, like a tube that goes into your trachea and essentially breathes for you with like a breathing machine. And but what they do is they also give you like uh, the muscle relaxant, like we talked about. And they also give you something like propofol to sedate you. Because if you were alive, you felt a big tube going into your throat, you would, first thing you want to do is take it out. And that would not be good because you want to be able to breathe by yourself, right? So that's kind of why they do it. So they kind of uh, relax your muscles a little bit so your throat isn't so constricted. And on top of that, as I said, they give propofol or some other um, sedative to make you go to sleep. And like we mentioned, this problems like giving propofol and all that. I'm not going to get into that in this video. But I kind of want to extenuate the differences between those two different procedures. So I hope you guys can kind of see how these medications kind of tie into these various procedures and how you kind of need one for another. For example, if your heart rate was dropping really low, then you'd give another medication to help raise it back up. If your blood pressure was really low, medication to bring it up. If your heart rate was really high, you're trying to get a medication to bring it low. If you have some sort of infection, give antibiotics on top of that. So it's kind of just like adding these various medications to counteract other side effects to add on new side effects to control vitals. That's basically the whole point, to make sure the patient's vitals are okay while they're being intubated and sort of, because they physically can't speak or tell anything that it's wrong. So we just kind of gauge it on the vitals. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video, even without the pictures. I'll try my best to figure something out, but you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.